So I'm Carl, I started uh, Mass Solution about four years ago and uh, uh, created a business basically to provide information, insight, data and, and help to people that were looking to get into crowdsourcing and crowdfunding. We run the uh, industry website crowdsourcing.org. I'm Kevin, I joined Carl uh, a little over a year ago uh, as the research director for Mass Solution. Um, in particular interested in, in the crowdfunding space. In 2012, there was just under $2.7 billion of funds that were raised on just over 550 platforms, the, the live, number of live platforms, um, and that was uh, allocated across about 1.1 million uh, campaigns that were successfully funded globally. So traditionally it, it's been for social causes or, or campaigns that had some engaging community component to them and, and what we're seeing now is, is sort of a transition into more business and entrepreneurial crowdfunding. Um, although, although social causes still has a lot of activity and it gets a lot of traction on, on campaigns and any, any campaign owner who are sort of able to communicate uh, a community engaging factor underlying the campaign will be more likely to be successful. I mean what we're seeing here is basically uh, you know technology catching up with the way that we want to behave okay so uh, you know for, for a number of years um, you know people have already expressed their desire to just engage differently on the internet um, you know you can publish your own work on YouTube you don't need you know production distribution anymore um, you know, when we go to Amazon, to these big uh, e-commerce sites, Amazon, eBay, you know, we don't really care about, uh, you know, a paid uh, reviewer and what they think about a particular book. What we care about is other customers' views. Um, you know, so, you know, new news is being reported democratically. You know, people, you know, people are filming news events with their own cameras. So this general behavior uh, and this desire, uh, you know, to sort of, you know, distribute and doc, you know, uh, um, um, democratize all of these different fashions is something that is, you know, is, is a trend and is a, is a set of behaviors that's already enabled. When it comes to crowdfunding, uh, first of all, you've got you know you've got technology that supports that engagement online. So the technology is caught up. You've got new payment systems uh, and regulations around payment that allow small bits of money to be transferred very cost effectively. Um, and you've also got a tremendous number of people coming online. There's going to be three billion people online by 2016. Five billion people by 2020. So what we're really seeing is that the technology and the means by which we can actually conduct in the way that we've been wanting to conduct ourselves for years has now caught up and is, is allowing that to happen. If you take the engagement factor out of the entire equation, then you're left with a product, a consumer or a potential consumer and patience, right? That's what you're, you're aiming at. And, and why would people all of a sudden be more patient and, and wait half a year to get their um, copy pop or whatever you just pre-purchased, right? So, so what's interesting with crowdfunding, and, and this is closely linked to the social activity on the campaign itself, is that the crowdfunder has this hand on the trigger, right? If we don't reach this funding goal, there's not going to be a product, right? So you're actually, you, you, you're co-deciding with the, the, the other crowdfunders which kind of products will be in the market a year from now. And that level of engagement and this, uh, this opportunity to decide the, the, the consumption options for other people has not been there before. 